In the previous lecture, we discussed the method by which we can basically determine what the composition of our protein is. So we discussed how we can determine what the types of amino acids are and the relative amounts of those amino acids inside our protein. Now, if even if we know what the composition is of our protein, we do not actually know what the sequence is of those amino acids in our protein. So we do not know what the primary structure is. Now in this lecture and the next series of lectures we're basically going to discuss how we can determine what the primary structure is that is what the sequence of amino acids is. So the first step in determining what the sequence is is to determine what the first amino acid is and the method that we can use to determine the first amino acid is known as the Sanger degradation. So this is the method by which we can determine which amino acid is our amino terminus. Amino terminus simply means the first amino acid in our sequence. It's the amino acid that contains the free amino group. Now the first step in Sanger degradation is to take our protein and mix it with a thiol molecule. The thiol molecule will basically reduce our protein. It will break all these red disulfide bonds. For example, let's suppose our protein has quaternary structure. It consists of these two polypeptide chains. We have the green polypeptide chain and the, and the blue polypeptide chain that are connected by disulfide bonds, these red bonds. If we mix it with our thiol, we basically denature, we break down all these red bonds and we now have our two individual separate polypeptide chains our red, uh, our not red one the green one and our blue one now the N simply means it's the first amino acid in line it's the amino end and the C means it's the carboxylate end so basically this is the first and this is the last amino acid in line and the same thing goes for the second blue polypeptide now, the next step in the Sanger degradation is to mix it with a molecule known as 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene. So if we mix our two polypeptides with 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene, which is this molecule here, we basically end up labeling, we attach that 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene group onto the first amino acid in our sequence. So now we basically label this end of our sequence and in the next step if we mix it with hydronium in water so if our hydrolysis reaction takes place and each one of the amino acids so we basically cleave each one of our peptide bonds and so now we have all our individual amino acids only two of these amino acids will now contain a labeled molecule. So this amino acid and this amino acid are the two amino acids that are each the first amino acid in our sequence of these two polypeptides. So then we can collect these amino acids and determine which amino acids those are. Now, what exactly is the reaction mechanism in which we take our two four or dinitrofluorobenzene and we place it on top of that polypeptide. How does this reaction actually take place? So let's take a look at our reaction mechanism. So for simplification purposes, we're going to use a very short peptide, a tripeptide. So we have our amino acid number one, the first amino acid in line known as the amino terminus. We have the second amino acid and the third amino acid, which is our last amino acid known as the carboxy terminus. So in step one, we mix our 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene and what happens is the free 
free amino group on the first amino acid is the only amino group that can act as the nucleophile attacking this carbon of this molecule nucleophilically displacing this pi bond placing it here forming this resonant stabilized intermediate so although i haven't drawn we have resonant stabilization in this intermediate now in the next step we have the reformation of the aromatic benzene ring so this pi bond reforms this pi bond at the same time we have this fluorine le uh, leaves the molecule it acts as our leaving group and we form this intermediate that contains the positive charge on this nitrogen which is the nitrogen found on the first amino acid now in the third step some type of base for example the fluoride ion can deprotonate this H off of our nitrogen forming this labeled dipeptide molecule which is basically one of these molecules here in which this labeled section is our 2,4 dinitrofluorobenzene group it's the purple group that is shown in this sketch here now in step four, we basically take our labeled tripeptide and mix it with hydronium in water and hydrolysis takes place. So basically we break each one of these peptide bonds and we form the individual amino acids. And only one of these amino acids will contain a labeled section. And that's the first amino acid in line. So then we can basically use some type of analytical technique to determine what the amino acid is that contains this label 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene group. Now, of course, in this case, we have two of these polypeptides, so we would have two of such molecules, and then we have to determine which molecule basically belongs to which one of our chains. And we can do this easily by basically separating these two polypeptides into two different beakers and then conducting these experiments in these separate beakers.